Okay, so now we've discussed the different ways to uh, pay for advertisement. How do you actually get those ads online? Well, we kind of noted some of these e examples already, but um, with regards to the major methods, right, there is, for instance, premium book media, and this is much like how you would book a traditional newspaper ad. Usually you'd hire an ad agency, you wouldn't directly approach the publisher, but you get an ad agency that talks to the New York Times directly. It basically says, hey, we'd like to put an ad on your space. They buy a certain amount of space and they put it up there. Um, what's a little bit different in the digital space is you often have ad networks. Uh, so this is when a um, someone like Google or Facebook, their two largest prominent ad networks, they basically have contracts with a bunch of different publishers to display advertisements on their various pages, right? Um, and basically you make a contract with the ad network, the ad network then goes out and finds particular publishers that would be appropriate to publish your spaces. Then we have the ad exchanges, and these get a little tricky, and we're gonna talk a little bit more detail about this, but essentially, a lot of these are now revolving around real-time bidding. So, essentially, let's imagine that you go to click through to a publisher's website, and they have a spot on that website that they'd like to have an ad on, but they don't have an ad book for that spot right now. Well, they send details about your browsing history and whatever they know about you to an ad exchange. That ad exchange, while you're clicking through to the website, starts an auction to auction off that spot on that page, right? They, then what happens is a bunch of advertisers bid for that uh, particular ad uh, based upon the demographics information they know about the user, right? Uh, and then in that, and this all happens in microseconds, right, essentially, in order to get the ad in place so that by the time the page fully finishes loading, the ad is there and being displayed, right? So that's um, kind of a real future of a lot of these ad spaces. Um, we also have social media advertising, um, and the reason why that's a little different is that it's usually specific to the individual platforms. In other words, you don't usually purchase ad network space, and then um, that's how ad, the space is displayed on Google, Twitter, right? That's how the ads are displayed on Twitter. Instead, you go directly to Twitter. Um, they have a way that you can basically pr pr do things like get promoted tweets and promote hashtags, and you pay for those directly with Twitter or Facebook, right? Um, and a couple other important notions that relate to this, mobile advertising is usually delivered through one of these other methods, but a lot of times it is specific to mobile. So there'll be a mobile ad network and a uh, desktop ad network, for instance. Now with the advent of responsive design, that's kind of going away, but at least for a long time that was the case. It should also be noticed that you don't actually store these ads. Like It's not like they're sitting on a computer that you own. A lot of times you place them on what's called an ad server, and that way any of the different places that need to get a copy access to the ad can do so. So they don't have to request it at a particular time from you. So let's talk about these real-time bidding advertising schemes. These are really interesting. So essentially what happens in these is that the ad exchanges auction off web state real estate called a slot in real time as users are surfing the web literally in the time that it takes to click from one page to another millions of dollars are changing hands in these cases just for the impressions right and a lot of times these are impressions and not even uh, cost per click right because these are usually premium um, ad spaces right there has been an entire industry that's developed around these, and there's basically two different platforms uh, of, so and by platforms in this case, I mean companies that sell software or sell software as a service <coughs> that, uh, that engage either on the supply side or the demand side. On the supply side, that, that's the platforms that enable publishers to sell advertising on their page. In other words, the publishers are supplying space for these ads. And on the demand side, we have advertisers who are demanding the advertising space and they're trying to buy the advertising space. So we also have the ability to target and optimize our ads, right, in different ways than we could in uh, non-digital settings. So by tracking users using cookies and IP, and ad servers can actually provide things like frequency capping, which will limit the number of times a user sees an ad, sequencing, which means that they can see the ad, they can make sure they see ads in a particular order, um, exclusivity, so they can prevent a competitor's ads from being displayed on the same page, and even what's known as a roadblock, which means that an advertiser can go in and buy an entire uh, page of ads, right? Like so, that there are no other ads, even if they're not from a even if they're not from a competitor on the same page. When launching an online advertising campaign, I'm not going to go through this in step by step detail because a lot of these things now you probably have a sense for since you've gone through the class. But you need to determine the goal for the campaign, identify some KPIs, identify a target audience. 
Then research, and this is a little different than anything we talked about, research websites that would probably host those ads. And maybe there's a network, for instance, that really can give you a good example of that. Um, then set a budget for what you're willing to spend. Create adverbs, um, and because you're doing this later, because first thing you need to know where they're going to be placed. Develop a landing page, that's very important. You need to have a page that the users can click through from the ad so that it's specifically targeted toward um, that particular advertisement. Then you run the adverts, you track, measure, and optimize, right? Don't forget in the end to keep an eye on a non-digital advertising the brand is doing at the same time. This could have a significant effect on your results and you want to ensure that you're communicating the same message, right? Moreover, if you're doing something like an A-B test where you run the, the different digital marketing tests at different time periods, you want to make sure there's any kind of conflation with any offline advertising. So ads in, um, in the display case, in display advertising, they have set sizes and they look very familiar to users, which makes them very interpretable for the users. They can also capitalize on emotive qualities using images, videos, and animations. And the interactivity that, they, that you can create can build a bond that is memorable. Um, and they're very, very measurable, right, in the end. On the other hand, you know, they're intrusive, Pop-up blockers and extensions are growing in popularity. Uh, bandwidth can cause an issue over mobile devices especially, and ad fatigue can cause a problem as well where people just start to ignore the ads. Pop-up blockers is something in particular, or ad blockers in general, is something that's been discussed a lot in the news recently because, um, uh, specifically because for a long time it wasn't possible to run ad blockers on mobile devices, but when um, a couple years ago when Apple allowed extensions to be run on the Safari um, system, they allowed you to start doing um, blocking on, on your mobile device, um, or on the Chrome for that matter, right? Um, and so that actually caused a lot of consternation. Uh, but in the end, you gotta remember that a lot of publishers, their sole source of revenue is advertising. So uh, it's somewhat self-defeating to block um, a lot of the ads because then you won't have any content on the web to be serving up. Anyways, um, that's it for display advertising. Uh, take care.